my channel where I like to talk all things fragrance and beauty. This year marks an iconic year for one of my favorite fashion houses, and that is Chanel. May 5th, 1921, Chanel No. 5 was first released. It being 2021, it is now the 100th anniversary of Chanel No. 5 perfume. The original fragrance was released May 5th, 1921, to a select group of clientele at the fashion house Rue Cambon in Paris. It seemed nearly every part of Chanel No. 5 holds uh, symbolism and deeper meaning than from everything from the formulation of the perfume down to the bottle it's encased in. Chanel is obviously the icon of fashion to many, many people. However, it holds a certain sentiment for me for a couple of reasons. Chanel has always held a special place in my heart. Uh, it not only is a symbol of fashion, and I have been in love with fashion and makeup since I was born, most likely. It has sentimental value because my mom would wear Chanel No. 5 when she went out for days with my dad, so smelling it takes me right back to being a little girl and knowing my parents were going out whenever I smelled that fragrance. The second reason being uh, when I'm the middle child of two sisters, and when we turned 13 as kind of a coming of age, my mom took each of us just the two of us, to Chicago to get our makeover. And uh, when I went, I wanted Chanel. So I got my first Chanel look of makeup, and I still have it to this day. Going forward therein, pretty much all the makeup I got was Chanel until my late 20s. That's not to say I could afford a lot of it, but when I bought makeup, that's what I would get. To get into the history of Chanel No. 5 and Coco Chanel herself, Coco Chanel had been known for her fashion designs because of their cutting edge and avant-garde nature. Because of this, it holds no surprise that her very first fragrance would also be an abstract and avant-garde revolutionary perfume. The fragrance was created in 1921. The perfumer behind it, uh, obviously Gabrielle Chanel and then Ernest Beau. There were originally three concentrations created an eau de cologne, eau de toilette, and then the parfum. Not only was Chanel No. 5 the very first perfume for a woman created by a woman, but it was also the first abstract perfume. Chanel No. 5 is a floral aldehyde and actually is the very first floral aldehyde fragrance. Some speculate that maybe the overdose of aldehydes was a mistake that happened in his favor. Regardless, Chanel No. 5 became an icon of the 21st century. It was released at the same time um, of art as Cubism and Dadaism and Surrealism. So Chanel No. 5 is basically the olfactory comparison of these periods of art. Chanel No. 5 ranks as the most successful perfume in modern perfumery. As a historical tidbit, at the culmination of World War II, GIs actually took back uh, bottles of Chanel No. 5 from Paris, not only as a souvenir of French chic, but also as a symbol of liberty. Gabrielle named Chanel No. 5 Chanel No. 5 because 5 is said to be her favorite number that always brought her luck. Also, uh, she preferred the fifth sample of the fragrance, hence the name Chanel No. 5. Gabrielle wanted the bottle of the design to be an antidote for the over-elaborate fragrance bottles that were popular with Lalique and Baccarat at the time. She wanted the bottle to have pure transparency. It's generally said that the bottle design was uh, inspired by the rectangular beveled edges of the Charvet toiletry bottles that her lover, Arthur Capel, used at the time. It's also said that perhaps it could have been because of her admiration of the whiskey decanter that he used that she wanted to replicate with exquisite, expensive, and delicate glass. Noted the bottle that was released in 1922 differs from the bottle uh, that was later released to the public. Originally, the bottle had very small and delicate shoulders that would be too thin to make it through shipping and distribution. The bottle was then modified to be more square with more faceted corners, and that was the most significant design change. Since 1924, the bottle design has not changed. The stoppers have. The stopper has gone through uh, numerous modifications. The bottle itself over the decades has been such a cultural artifact that Andy Warhol used it to commemorate uh, its iconic status in his mid-1980s silkscreen paintings. To celebrate the 100th anniversary of Chanel No. 5, Chanel created worldwide pop-up boutiques to explore No. 5. They designed them to be like a mini theme park for a vibrant shopping experience. They used everyday objects emblazoned with the Chanel No. 5 label, thus taking everyday objects 
and transfiguring them into luxury items. Gabrielle Chanel had already transfigured everyone's views of fashion and with the allure of Chanel number no. five, she remained consistent with this evolutionary fashion design. And speaking of uh, number no. five perfume itself, as I said, it is considered a floral aldehyde and contains uh, an overdose of aldehyde in its opening notes. Uh, Ernest Beau boosted the jasmine, ylang ylang, and rose, but with the alchemy of the aldehyde, there's no real trace of any prominent uh, floral note. So the top notes of Chanel number no. five include aldehyde, ylang ylang, neroli, bergamot, and lemon. Middle notes, heart of the fragrance is iris, jasmine, rose, orris root, and lily of the valley. And then the base of the fragrance is civet, amber, sandalwood, musk, moss, vetiver, vanilla, and patchouli. In 2016, Chanel wanted to create a more lighter and fresher, modernized approach to Chanel number no. five that would appeal to more younger millennials. To do such, uh, Olivier Poles used a prominent note of May Rose from Gross. Olivier worked on this reformulation of the fragrance since 2013, so for three years. Chanel number no. five, low. As top notes, both low and Chanel number no. five both share those aldehydes, the lemon neroli, and the bergamot, but then low adds in mandarin orange, orange, and lime. Ylang Ylang is also in Chanel number no. five, but Ylang Ylang is in the top note for the original Chanel, and it moved to the middle notes for Chanel number no. five low. Then Jasmine, both share in common, and then that added note of May Rose. So for the base notes, both the low and the parfum share white musk and vanilla. Orris root, is also in the parfum, but it's in the heart of the fragrance, and then cedar was added. So in culmination, the low and the parfum both share about nine notes in common, and then the low has five added notes. Uh, I actually have never owned Chanel number no. five, the original. Like I said, my mom wore it, and it just always reminded me of my mom's. I never could separate wearing it from thinking of my mom. However, when this 100th anniversary was released and they had these limited edition products, I did go ahead and purchase the Chanel number no. five low, which came in the factory packaging. And then you open it up and there's the gorgeous faceted square transparent bottle. It really is a lovely, lovely fragrance. I've been wearing it since purchase. I can definitely still smell Chanel number no. five in it. However, it does seem lighter and more fresh, um, more airy and breezy. It's a perfect summer fragrance. It's casual, but still classy. Knowing it's Chanel and spraying it on in such a luxurious bottle, I have to say I feel very feminine and um, luxurious spraying that on. As did Marilyn Monroe, who's uh, famous for having said that she wears nothing to bed but Chanel number no. five. I have been wearing it to bed with my jammies, of course, and just feeling so elegant and classy. I definitely recommend it lately in this humid heat that we've been having because the, it's the perfect fragrance that just tends to expand and become elaborated in the heat but isn't overbearing or overpowering. It just, just like a veil or an aura of this breeze of a scent. It also is a designer perfume price. So I think the bottle itself was like 120, which uh, compared to the niche fragrances I've been reviewing lately is a refreshing, more inexpensive option. And I hope you enjoyed the history of Chanel and Chanel number no. five. Again, my name's Catherine. Welcome to my channel if you're new here, if you're a return guest, thank you for your loyalty. I've been doing a selection of historical fragrance videos lately. I just find it so fascinating to find out the history of fragrances and learning more about these famous or notorious people and what they chose as their signature fragrance. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am and I hope to see y'all soon. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.